Hi, Erin. So this is going to be your hip hinging priming motion, which hip hinging is something that as yogis and dancers is confusing as shit to us because we've never been taught how to do it. And I just want to show you something on my little skeleton guy that's really helpful for understanding what it is we're trying to do. So many of us, you, me, before I learned, <clears throat> we live with our pelvis rocked forward like this. So if you were to imagine your pelvis is a bowl of water, we're dumping that bowl of water forward on the floor and this shortens the low back and it does make us feel a little bit more stable but not in a good sustainable way. So, and then the other piece of that is we're rocked into an unneutral position of the pelvis and then when we try to move, we're always moving from the low back a little bit, if you can see that. And if any time you move your leg, you have to move the back also, you're going to start hurting your back eventually. Because this big joint down here, the actual hip joint, is way further down than we expect. Like It is legit all the way down here. And this is where when we pick something up or we hinge over, this is the only place we want to move. And that's why we're working, or we're going to start working with you breathing so much is because the diaphragm creates stability for the spine so that we can effectively move from our hip. Okay? So, when you're visualizing this motion, I want you to think about these joints way down here and think this is the only place that I'm moving from. Okay? Everything up here is going to stay in the exact same shape. It's not necessarily straight because it's your spine, there's curves in it, but there's no pivot point or movement happening in there. So we'll put this guy away. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna step with your feet, I'll show you this way so you can just see my feet to start, but they're gonna be about hip width apart and turned out just a little bit. And really, you're putting the feet down so that you can create friction between your feet and the ground and externally rotate your feet on the ground a little bit. So I'm not, you can see I'm not physically moving my feet, but I'm externally rotating my hips, that joint we just talked about, and this is going to help turn my butt on more. So from the side, that same thing, there's a little external rotation of the femurs, and then, and you'll feel your butt turn on with that right here, okay? It's going to be really important that you stay centered on your feet. So underneath here, the first big toe, I can balance, I swear. Your balance is actually amazing also. Show me up in that regard. But underneath the first big toe, underneath the pinky toe, and underneath the heel bone, those are the three points of the foot that are your tripod foot that we like to think about the weight being perfectly di evenly distributed across. So it can be a little easier to just think, I'm going to have my weight one inch in front of my ankle, kind of centered between those three points, because if it starts to shift one way or another, you're rolling or avoiding a certain range of motion. So that's your litmus test, if that makes sense. So we're set up. The last thing we need to do is pull the pull the pelvis backwards, like rotating it back so that the bowl of water isn't going to spill on the floor anymore. Or an easy way to think about it is to be pulling the suspenders up on the front of your pants like this. And then you're going to breathe down into your belly, your sides, and your back to create a bracing system for your spine so that you can just move from your hip. And it looks like this. Then what you're going to do once you have that breathing and bracing in place is just take your hands and slide them down the front of your thighs. You're going to keep your shins perpendicular to the ground as you do that, which means your butt is going to have to go back in space a lot. Now this is a, a motion that a dancer never has to do. So you're going to feel awkward. At first you're almost certainly going to feel like you're going to fall backwards off your heels. 
take it slow. Obviously, don't actually fall, but you're figuring out a new balance point where your butt is way behind your body so that your spine doesn't have to move. So again, the hands are on the front of the thighs. My spine is straight. My suspenders are pulled up. I'm going to breathe down into my 360 breathing. And then the only movement that happens is from my hips. So there's no spinal movement. But the first action is that right from my hips, the butt goes back, which means my knees have to bend a little bit. And I'm primarily staying focused on keeping my shins exactly perpendicular to the floor or exactly vertical. Right from this hip joint, I'm continuing to let the butt go back. My shins are still vertical. My spine is still straight. You can see it's not happening from here. It's happening from here. And then at the bottom, I'm like, am I still centered on my feet? And the answer right now is actually kind of no. I'm a little bit more on the left than the right. And then you're going to push down through your feet to let your butt bring you back up. It's really easy. I feel like we think our back should be doing anything. So when you're coming out of the bottom, I don't want you thinking of lifting your back up because you're going to lose that nice spinal stability that we just made. So it's not from the back, but it's pushing down through the butt and the hip joint so that the back stays relaxed. That was a lot of words. Yeah, and you can use your hands physically on that joint to feel it pushing back in space. Okay, so you're gonna use a combination of the hands on the hips, the hands sliding down the front of the thighs to play with this over the next couple of weeks. Watch this video your hands on the trochanters and let her feel them rotate underneath. Not here, on the trochanter. Let her... John is schooling me from the side over here. So he just really wants to make sure that you're feeling how your trochanters, which is the part of your hip I showed you on the skeleton, is rotating backwards. So there's this big bony nub that's sticking out on the outside of your hip down here. So this is, this is like my pelvis up here. All the way down here is where the hip is. Or the femur, I should say. So you're going to find that spot. And then I want you to feel as you bring your butt back, that that femur rotates back. Okay. So you're learning how to move right from this joint instead of from anywhere else. You're going to rewatch this video a couple of times. There's a lot of different cues and things happening in it. And I know that if you dedicate yourself to thinking about this hinging, you're going to pick it up really quickly. And then we'll be able to add layers onto the top of it. So enjoy and let us know if you have any questions.